Hello everybody, my name is Mohammed. I'm going to present uh, two bar RSA UAP without random oracles. This is a joint work with uh, Nairon Kao and Adam Monir. Here's the outline of the talk. I will start by going over some background and motivation. After that, I will uh, give you some, uh, an overview of our results. Then I will define the extractable functions, uh, the primitives that we use in our results. After that, I will go over details of one of our results on instantiating uh, S-Clear RSA UAP. After that, I will finish with the conclusion. Uh, I will start by uh, going over the definition of public encryption schemes. We use public encryption schemes to transfer confidential messages through the internet and uh, in this model, in, the, in this encryption, everyone has a pair of key, public key and a secret key. For example, if Alice wants to send a message through the internet to Bob, he, he uses the uh, secret, uh, public key of the Bob to encrypt the message M and get the ciphertext, send the ciphertext through the uh, internet to Bob and Bob uses its own secret key uh, to decrypt and get the message M. Uh, we need uh, this public, the public key encryption, we need a secure public key encryption schemes. And um, one of the uh, kind of most basic security guarantees that we uh, define in cryptography is called indistinguishability of uh, under chosen plaintext or INDCPA. And this is defined as a game between a challenger and an adversary. And uh, we require that the, in the game, the, uh, the probability of the adversary winning the game should be negligible if you want to secure a public key in encryption. In this game, uh, INDCPA game, the challenger chooses a bit B and uh, runs the key generation to get the public key and the secret key. Then it sends the public key to the adversary then adversary chooses two messages, M0 and M1, and send it back to the challenger. The challenger, based on the, uh, the bit B, encrypts one of the messages, either M0 or M1, under the public key PK, and get the ciphertext C and send back the ciphertext to the adversary. And the adversary needs to guess the um, bit B. Uh, and we say if the public key encryption scheme is secure, if the advantage of the adversary on guessing B is uh, very close to half. We can also get a, um, we can also um, strengthen the security definition by giving the adversary uh, an ac access to the decryption oracle, where the adversary can uh, do uh, make the decryption query of C star and gets the uh, underlying message M star. If we do, if we give the adversary this Oracle access, then we'll have a IND CCA security. One of the models that we uh, investigate the security of the uh, public encryption schemes in is called random Oracle models. And in this random oracle model is an idealized model where all the parties have access to the same random functions. Uh, this model proposed uh, by Bilari and Ragbe in 1993. This is a very popular uh, model to design practical encryption schemes. Uh, and uh, one of the things that we need to note is that the scheme that we design in the random oracle model, uh, we don't have any formal security proof for them, except that they resist a generic attack when we treat the hash functions as a black box. And uh, one of the, uh, and even worse, we, uh, there, there is a work in 98 by Kennedy, uh, Goldrich and Halvey, uh, and also some other works that show that there are schemes that uh, they, they, might, they might be secure under the random oracle model, but if we replace the, ha the true random function with the real hash function of MD5 or SHA1, we get, we get an unsecure 
uh, schemes. So at which they called, we call these schemes uninstantiable schemes. And this is a very serious problem with the random oracle model. So the question that we are trying to answer here is that how secure are these random oracle based schemes? The scheme that we design in the, in the random oracle model show the security they are INDCPA or INDCCA secure and we use in practice, but we are not sure based on this negative result that I mentioned that are they really secure or not? And one of the um, kind of a, a schemes that we use in practice, uh, it's even in, implemented in our, in our browser is RSA UAP, uh, which shown to be secure in random Oracle model, but we don't have any results in a standard model for that. And we are trying to investigate this scheme specifically in our work. There are, there are several um, results uh, for the RSA UAP. For example, in 94, uh, it was shown to be secure, INDCPA secure in the random Oracle model, and also INDCCA2 in the random Oracle model. It was shown to be secure in the random Oracle model in 2001. And there are also some standard model results. Uh, those are random Oracle that I mentioned. The standard model, we have partial instantiation results for a variant of the scheme, which is called T-Clear uh, in 2006. And uh, under the strong assumptions on GNH, and uh, we also have a full instantiation results well, uh, where we get a non-malleability, not the CCA2, uh, for the same variant, T-Clear. We also have a, uh, full instantiation results in a standard model that achieves INDCPA security uh, when RSA is lossy. And uh, the assumption that we have on, uh, they have on G is that G is TY is independent. And this was the work from 2010. All of these results uh, about the RSA UAP that I mentioned, they are under weak, uh, they achieve a weak and uh, security notions. They did not achieve IND CCA2, which is a gold kind of a uh, security uh, requirement that we would like to have. Uh, so there is no IND CCA2, IND CCA security on random, uh, on the standard model. And to recall in the IND CCA model, the adversary have access to the decryption oracle. And this CCA security model the active adversary that could inject packets into the network. And this is uh, very important that we need, to, we, it's important to consider a active adversary versus passive adversary. Because uh, for example, in uh, uh, 2016, uh, we have an attack, the active adversary attack on iMessage. So we would like our, security is our public encryption scheme to be secure against active attackers, not just passive attacker. So it's important to investigate the INDCCA security for RSA or AP. Uh, so here are uh, kind of an overview of our results. We have uh, partial instantiation results. Uh, in the partial instantiation results, we either instantiate G, where we uh, model H as a random oracle, or we instantiate H when we um, uh, kind of assume G is a random oracle model. And the the, we instantiate, partially instantiate under the mild assumption on G and H and the RSA one minus on RSA. And the, inter in the interesting point about this partial instantiation result is that because we partially instantiate both of G and H, this implies that the adversary needs to exploit the interaction of the two hash functions to be able to attack the uh, RSA UAP. Uh, th this is uh, the partial instantiation results is uh, under IND CCA2 security notion. And the main tool that we use uh, 
is a kind of a algebraic properties of RSA. Um, uh, the second input extractability and common input extractability. And it was shown that the RSA have these properties for a small encryption exponents. And we have a prior works uh, on this, on RSA UAP, which shows IMD CPA for a large exponent. Uh, so we have to show, uh, we have to start with the IMD CPA and then extend it to INDCCA. And we have other results, uh, full instantiation. So the one that I explained was partial instantiation. This one, we have a full instantiation results for two variants of RSA OAP, uh, S-clear and T-clear. These uh, variants give insights to the OAP frameworks. And um, for for the T-clear, we, get, we uh, got IMDCCA1 security when we model uh, G and H as a extractable functions and one vanus assumption on RSA. For the T-clear, for the S-clear, we, would, we, would, we were able to get IMDCCA2 security when we assume G is extractable function and we also have some novel assumption on RSA. So by having these assumptions on RSA and G, we could be able to get the IMDCCA2 security. The main tool that we use for these uh, full instantiation results are uh, extractable functions, which I explain, uh, which I go through the definition of them in the next slide. So these extractable functions in intuitively capture the fact that if you know the image, a valid image of the function, you must know the pre corresponding pre-image. So if the adversary come up with a valid image, he already knows the pre-image. There are three different uh, notions for extractable functions. Uh, we have ext0, ext1, and ext2. In EXC0, the adversary produced just one image. And it was, uh, this EXC0 was given, uh, was first introduced in 2009. Uh, and uh, we have EXC1, which the adversary can uh, interactively make uh, many image and get the pre-image the, as an answer. And for EXC2, the adversary have additional access to the image oracle and could get the fresh image of an unknown pre-image uh, pre with some hint function uh, about the pre-image. So to go more into the detail of the definition, this definition is defined as a game between a challenger, adversary, and an extractor. And uh, in this game, the challenger picks up some key of the function and also some coin, pass it to the adversary. The adversary using the coin and the key deterministically come up with some image Y and give it to the challenger or in this case extractor. Then the challenger extractor um, on input Y and the, pre the image Y the function key k and the coin of the adversary outputs x and pass it to the adversary. And the adversary wins the game if the, answer, the, uh, the extractor answer is incorrect. And uh, for, the, this is, uh, for the exe0, the adversary can make one query to the extractor. For exe1, the adversary could make multiple uh, query to the extractor and for e, for exe2 notion the adversary have access to the image oracle which gets the fresh image uh, random image of a unknown pre-image and we say a function is extractable uh, exc0 exc1 or exc2 if the uh, the advantage of the adversary the probability of the adversary winning this game is negligible 
So basically, we are able to invert any image that the adversary produce, any valid image that the adversary produce by knowing the coins of the adversary. And this gives us the ability to be able to answer into, in, in our uh, instantiation, this primitive uh, gives us the ability to be able to answer to the decryption oracle uh, queries that the adversary makes in our INDCCA games. And I'll show you how we make use of this primitive in our instantiation results. Uh, so uh, we are the first one to consider EXE1 and EXE2 definitions. Um, we also uh, define the L-bit extractable functions when the, when the extractor could, uh, pro uh, could uh, invert the uh, um, challenge image that the adversary makes by only knowing the L-bit of the image. And this L-bit uh, extractability is a specific uh, kind of a case for the general definition that was given in 2009, um, where they assume any functions of the image. Uh, now we'll go uh, a little bit more detail into our, uh, one of our results for a full instantiation of S-clear. Uh, first of all, we are the first one to give a positive result for this variance. Uh, we have only negative results for, from the prior works. Um, and uh, we show that by some novel assumption on the RSA and assumption on GNH, we could uh, get the INDCCA2 results, which is very interesting. And this is, uh, this is kind of a um, very efficient, the most, um, most efficient scheme that we, by, by the best of our knowledge, know in the, that it exists in the literature for the INDCCA secure um, encryption scheme in the standard model. Uh, we start by showing the IND CPA security. We only, because there, there are no uh, positive results from the prior works. So we begin by the IND CPA security. We only assume mild assumption on G. We assume uh, so, uh, G is a pseudorandom, a pseudorandom generator. And by some novel assumption of X or base uh, kind of assumption on RSA, uh, or more specifically XOR IND assumption, which we call XOR IND, we could have the IND CPA security. So uh, uh, by assuming G to be PRG, any assumption, H could be any function, RSA uh, being XOR IND, we could get IND CPA security. I will go more into details of what we and mean by XOR IND definitions. The XOR IND notion is defined as a game uh, between a challenger and adversary. In this game, the ad adversary, uh, the challenger, I'm sorry, the challenger choose a bit B and uh, run the key uh, trapdoor key generation, gets the trapdoor F and uh, the F minus uh, F invert and uh, pick a random pre-image X and pass F and G of X, which is a hint of uh, some hint, uh, uninvertible hint on X to the adversary. So the adversary have F and G of X. Uh, the adversary output some Z and pass it to the challenger. The challenger based on the bit B, um, either uh, compute uh, y0 and y1, y0 is f of x, y1 is f of x, x or with z, and pass either y0 or y1 based on the bit b. So the pass yb to the adversary, the adversary now needs to guess the bit b. If the, the probability of the adversary guessing bit b is very close, negligibly close to bit b uh, to half, then we say the tractor function F is X or I and D. Uh, 
So uh, we got IND CPA security on, uh, uh, for the S-clear by assuming uh, XOR IND and pseudo randomness uh, on G. What we uh, now are trying, would like to show is to uh, improve it and get the IND CCA security results for these primitives. Uh, there is a prior works, the negative results that I mentioned. Uh, that in 2002, but shoop that shows that the one wayness assumption on RSA is not enough to get INDCCA2 security, even in the random oracle model. So if we have G as a if we model G as a random oracle and H as a random oracle, and RSA is one way, we cannot get INDCCA2 security, which is interesting. And basically, the attack, there is a simple attack that uh, kind of take advantage of the fact that if the underlying trapdoor, in this case RSA or any trapdoor, is malleable with respect to the X or functions, then the adversary could easily uh, attack and get guess the bit B in the game or in the CCA game. So we need some novel assumption on RSA or our, in our uh, trapdoor function that we use on uh, in our public key encryption, OAEP public key encryption. And uh, we argue that this uh, kind of assumption that I will introduce in the next slides, which we call X or uh, non malleability, uh, uh, is very likely uh, to be satisfied by RSA because RSA has a multiplicative structure. And uh, this XOR uh, non malleability notion is defined as a game between challenger and adversary. And uh, the ba basically, uh, it shows that the adversary, by getting F and F of X for a random X, uh, uniformly random X, cannot come up with F of X prime and alpha, where alpha is an XOR relation between X and X prime. So the advantage of the adversary. Giving, uh, getting uh, f of x uh, by, uh, for outputting some f of x prime with the alpha uh, relationship between x and x prime is negligible. And these assumptions by uh, knowing that the RSA have this uh, nice multiplicative structure, uh, we believe that it might be, it is, uh, reasonable to have this assumption on RSA. And uh, so in our uh, instantiation, we use our uh, strongest extractability notion on e, uh, or ext2 notion on G. So we assume G is ext2. And uh, we also assume RSA is X or non malleable and uh, we have uh, collision resistant assumption on H. Uh, by these three assumptions, we show that we could get uh, INDCCA2 security on RSA OAEP, on S clear RSA OAEP. And the proof idea is basically we know that it's INDCPA secure. Now we have to improve it to INDCCA2. So we have to show that we, the, we could answer the decryption oracle. And the decryption oracle, uh, to answer the decryption oracle of the adversary, we use the extractor, extractor for G, because we know that G is extractable, so we use that extractor to answer the uh, oracle, uh, the decryption oracle queries that the adversary makes. We also need to show that the adversary could not come up with a ciphertext that the extractor could not extract. And uh, if the adversary, we know that if the adversary come up with the, uh, with the ciphertext C prime with the same randomness as a challenge ciphertext C, the, 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 then the extractor fails. So we have to bond this probability. And to bond this probability, we use the assumption on uh, H and uh, RSA so we show that if the adversary could come up with C prime, we either could find a collision on H or we could attack 
the non-X or non-malleability on RSA. Uh, so we bond these um, bad uh, events and we could show that we could easily answer the decryption of all queries. Uh, okay, so uh, to conclude, uh, we, we study uh, to what extent we could eliminate the RO assumptions on the G and H in the RSA OAP encryption. Uh, in the prior works, uh, there were no positive results in the standard model for RSA OAP or its variants under the IMD CCA2 security. Uh, we gave a partial instantiation results uh, for RSA OAP under CCA2 security notion. We also gave a full instantiation for one of the variants, uh, S-clear, uh, under CCA2 notions. We also gave uh, CCA1 for T-clear, um, RSA OAP. Uh, thank you very much. I would be happy to uh, take any questions.